Hello class, how are you doing? This is um, Mr. McAllen and I just wanted to walk us through a little video of um, one of the BC questions from 2006. Um, it has a little bit of everything uh, for a good review for BC and um, I just wanted to uh, you know, give you my um, solution for this. So uh, we start off and we see that we have a differential equation given to us and um, they tell us that y can't equal 2 otherwise it wouldn't exist and um, you know they said let f of x be the particular solution to the differential equation with the initial condition. With all that they want us to first evaluate uh, dy dx and uh, the second derivative at negative 1 comma 4. So let's go about and do that. So um, dy dx at um, negative 1 comma 4 is just going to be found by plugging in um, negative 1 for x and negative 4 for y and uh, we're going to get for that um, 5 times negative 1 squared minus 6 over um, negative 4 minus 2 and that would be 5 minus 6 over negative 6 which turns into um, 5 plus 1 which would be 6. So the next part is, is we have to find the second derivative using the first. So we start out by just writing dy dx as what it originally was. And when we take its derivative We have we have the um, second derivative, and we got to make sure we multiply that by dy dx when we do implicit. And now we're going to evaluate that at at x equals negative one, y equals negative four, and for this we're going to get negative ten. Well, I'll just write it out. And I'll put negative 4 minus 2 in for y. We'll square that. And we got to multiply that by our dy dx value from before at the same point which we got in the last step was to be 6. So our answer here will be negative 10 plus um, 36 over 36 which will end up being negative 10 plus 1 which will be negative 9. So that is the answer to part A. Part B asks us to find is it possible for the x-axis to be tangent to that graph at some point? Explain why or why not. So um, I'm just going to cut and paste that equation and I'm going to put that down below and try to answer it down here. So for us to have horizontal, have a tangent line on the x-axis two things have got to happen. X has got to equal, um, I mean Y has got to equal zero and <coughs> ty dx has got to equal zero as well. So what we can do is we can set dy dx equal to zero and that will equal 5x squared minus 6 over y minus 2 we can uh, then suppose that y equals 0, so we'll have 5x squared minus 6 over negative 2, because y equals 0. 
which results in us trying to find a point for x such that when we square it and add 3 to it, we get 0. But that is impossible. Because you square any number, it's going to become positive. And add 3 to it, it's going to become more positive. And there's no way that that would ever equal 0. So that would be my justification for that. And I'm just going to pause it while I look at part 3. OK, I'm back. And uh, part C, I should say, says find the second degree Taylor polynomial uh, for f about x equals negative 1. So this would be a Taylor series and a Maclaurin series. And um, we actually need our function. Uh, we need our first derivative and second derivative at that coordinate. And it just so happens that because of what we did in part A, we have all the values that we need. We just need to put it into the proper form for the Taylor polynomial. So I'm going to just um, cut and paste this portion down below so I can work on it more efficiently. And I'm going to um, write out the Taylor polynomial. This is 0th derivative, which is really the function, at c, or I should say at a, times x minus a to the 0th power, plus all over 0 factorial, plus the first derivative at a, um, plus the second derivative at a x minus a to the second power all over 2 factorial. Now we know what um, the function was at, we know what the function value was at negative 1. Um, this portion here will equal just 1 because anything raised to 0 power is 1. All over 0 factorial is 1. And now I'm going to look at my first derivative at x equals negative 1 times x minus negative 1, the first power, all over 1, plus my second derivative at negative 1, all over 2 factorial. And when I plug these values in, because I remember them from the earlier part of the problem, uh, this was negative 4, plus the first derivative at negative 1 was equal to uh, 6 times x plus 1. I'm going to simplify that term. And then the second derivative from before was um, negative 9 times x plus 1 squared all over 2. So this should be my second uh, degree Taylor polynomial for f of x. I'm going to pause it while I look at the last part. OK, folks, um, I'm back. And uh, I just wanted to uh, cut and paste another um, another copy of this question. So here we go. We have uh, Euler's method. So I'm going to just set up the Euler's method table that we've talked about in class, where we have x, we have y, we have dy dx. And we know the formula for that, which is 5x squared minus 6 over y minus 2. And then from that, we're going to find out our new y value, which will equal our old y value, um, plus the dy dx value times our delta x. And this is an approximate method, and we're going to be taking two steps to get there. So our first x value, because they said to start with uh, x equals negative 1. If x equals negative 1, y equals um, negative 4. And dy dx from uh, earlier in the calculation we found was 6. So we can jump right to the first step and say that our new y value is going to equal the old one, negative 4, plus uh, 6 times our, oh, our y step is going to be or was said uh, delta x. We were going to take two steps to get to 0. So our step would be 
um, one half. So that'll be one half. And so our new y value is going to equal negative four plus three uh, will be negative one. So let me just verify that. Okay, yep. So now we're going to have, our, we're going to be at negative one half. Our new y value is going to be um, negative one. Our dy dx it has to be recalculated. So I'm just going to pause it while I recalculate. Okay, so I went through and I did the uh, the work for recalculating our new dy dx. That's something I have to do every time the x and y values change. Um, and I found the new dy dx was 13 over 4, so now I'm going to find my new y, which this should be my last uh, step because um, at the next step I will be at a x value of 0, which is what they asked me to be at. So I need to take the old y value, which was negative 1, plus my new derivative is 13 over 4, and I want to multiply that by my step size again. And when I do the math on that, I have um, 13 over 8 plus 1, which will result in, I'm sorry, 13 over 8 minus 1, which will be 5 eighths. So my new y value is 5 over 8. And that concludes this problem. Um, hopefully this was of help uh, for you. And if you have any questions or that, we'll see you in class. And um, you know I'll be posting another BC question up later, which has more to do with uh, Taylor series and error approximation. So um, well, we'll see you later, guys and uh, girls. Take care. Have a good day.